Hi dear audience, I am Abdul Rashid. Today we are going to discuss seven types of ambiguity. Uh, this is a 20th century criticism. Uh, uh, first, before going to proceed about the seven types of ambiguity, we would be discussing the two major uh, literary movements of criticism which have been the evident in the 20th century. One was the Russian formalism and the second was a new criticism. So, uh, usually it is asked the question that what is the difference between Russian formalism and new criticism. We have to make it uh, clear it in our mind that these are basically the two names of a same movement. The movement which started in Russia that's called the Russian formalism and the same tendency, the movement with the same tendency, with the same notions, with the same philosophy uh, was uh, there in uh, in America that was named as new criticism. As you know, uh, it was not uh, familiar. I mean, the pattern or uh, the philosophy on which the works people were uh, working in Russia, they named it as Russian formalism, and those who working in America they named it as new criticism. While the tendency and the rules were of almost the same one. Here I have written the word defamiliarization means the Russian uh, formalist emphasized that in order to create the meaning from the language you have to uh, a critic, uh, 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 sorry, a uh, fiction writer or, or an artist is supposed to use the literary devices and through those literary devices he use, uh, he creates a situation of defamiliarizations means to make the known things as unknown and to uh, and make the familiarized things as defamiliarized uh, it is basically uh, means the literariness to make the known things as unknown and unknown things as known that is the defamiliarizations and these techniques if we have uh, we see uh, the art that they, they are very dominant and they are very visible in every uh, piece of literature. For example, if we see that uh, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by uh, S.T. Coleridge, so there, there are the supernatural things and they are working as they are natural and similarly means he has uh, used different literary devices and uh, the other notion which is very famous of this new criticism that is the seven types of ambiguity which ha mm, Samson has discussed so uh, ambiguity are the familiarization they are all focus uh, all focus on the uh, creation of a situation wh which may attract the readers and the audience uh, which may create the novelty of the meanings you know meanings come through different parameters whether that come from contradiction from uh, similes from metaphors from uh, a lot of devices are used to create the meaning so first we discuss what what is ambiguity and ambiguity is in ordinary speech means something very pronounced as a rule a witty or deceitful uh, m means uh, uh, you, you know uh, as you know uh, that uh, on, on a single phenomena different uh, readers or the different audience have their own means of interpretations have their own uh, understanding about that so uh, it, it gives uh, room for the alternative uh, reactions to the same piece of the language. Uh, so the first ambiguity, type of ambiguity which Samson has um, discussed is that that the problem of pure sa sound and atmosphere that uh, in this situation there might be the problem means the reader can uh, uh, mix the pure sound at the atmosphere and may may turn towards ambiguity for example in a sufficiently extended sense any prose statement can be called ambiguous means poetry it is not only the uh, uh, poetry where might be the ambiguity in uh, prose there might be the ambiguity as well for example uh, this is the example the brown cat sat on the red mat 
may be explicit into the following series. This statement is about a cat. So see, brown, cat, sat, uh, red, mat. So cat, sat, mat, the, these are the sounds which are uh, ambiguous. For example, even if on the very first um, I say the brown cat sat on the bread mat, you might be confused that what he is talking about uh, and then so uh, it, it might be the ambiguous situation um, means the readers cannot get the meaning. So this is a statement about the cat which is a brown and this is a statement about a cat which was sitting on the mat so this is the br uh, this is the statement about a cat which was brown and this is a uh, statement about a, a cat which was brown and was sitting on the mat which was red so uh, in this in this situation uh, ambiguity is created so uh, this ambiguity also uh, creates an interesting situation as well for the readers uh, now we uh, focus on the second type of ambiguity in which two or more alternative meanings are fully resolved into one for example here i have given the example of cupid uh, this is from shakespeare means the word and the syntax they create the ambiguity and they are resolved into the one so there are the alternatives even in the mind of the authors for example cupid is swingled and does range her country so my love doth change uh, but change here change earth and change sky yet i will love her till i die this is uh, a sonnet here Cupid is, uh, uh, you know, that that um, uh, bowl of wine. Uh, I love her, though she moves from this part of the earth to the one that of uh, that is out of my reach. This is explanation. I will love her, though she goes to live under different skies. I love. Uh, I will love her, though she moves from this earth and the sky to an another planet. So all these, you know, she changes her sky, she changes the earth, she changes the sky, I will love till I die, all these uh, make it more literary, but they are... Uh, a very good syntax cannot, cannot be a, a single, uh, you know, me meaningful sentence. How a, a female, how a female can be moving from one earth to the sky of another planet without aeroplanes are like this. And uh, the age in which this sonnet has been, and, and these lines have been happening, I think that that was not the age of uh, scientific inventions as well. So I will love her though she moves into the social or intellectual spheres where I cannot f follow. I will love her though she alters the earth and the sky. I have got now though she destroys the bubble of the worship in which I am now living by show showing herself unworthy. I will love her though uh, being yet worthy of it. But going away she changes my earth into the desire and unrest and my heaven into the despair so out of these uh, four lines uh, the following multiple meanings and ambiguous meanings definitely ambiguous means alternative meanings are going to happen i will love her even if she has both power and will to upset does the orderly ideals of the men in journal means heaven and the system of the society in journal she may alter the earth and the sky she has now been uh, now by abandoning her faith or in just punishment become outcast and still i love her she may change my earth by killing me but till it comes i will go on living so uh, you you might be able that with this so the system of outcast punishment uh, disguise they have not been discussed uh, in the text they have not been named in this text uh, 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 but uh, multiple interpretations uh, 
multiple meanings are coming due to these ambiguous situations so change in this change or change is sky for example but but the change but change she earth or change is sky this is a simple statement but it is giving a lot of meanings a lot of interpretations so this second type of ambiguity in which in a single syntax syntax or a word uh, they, there might be the different um, ambiguous situation and they are going to give many and multiple meanings third type of ambiguity is that when two apparently unconnected meanings are given simultaneously means they are uh, joined in a single sentence the ambiguity of the third type considered as a verbal matter occurs when two ideas which are connected only by being both relevant in the context can be given in one word simultaneously this is often done by the reference to uh, de uh, derivations mean derived thus dalila is a character she, this is about the description of dalila that she is that specious monster my accomplished snare so monster and the snares they are different but the, they cannot be uh, 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 labeled to the woman so here you know you might have been heard about the uh, um, metaphysicals that they use the conceits uh, conceits are not uh, quite relevant to the object but they are violently broken and joke to to to, to make a meaning so th this notes that specious beautiful and deceitful monster something unnatural and something uh, striking shown as a sign of disaster accomplished means beauty for example even uh, you're, uh, you, uh, there is a literary device which is uh, uh, th that's called uh, a literary device of uh, you know um, to m make the humans as the natural ones uh, and they are as a walking animal uh, uh, that that is used actually at the moment I am not remembering its name uh, uh, personification that's personification to uh, label the uh, non-living objects as they are the living so accomplishment skilled as the art of uh, blandishment and successful in undoing her husband the point here is the sharpness are the distinction between the two meanings of which reader is forced to be aware there are two types of information one the parts of the narrative means which are given in the narrative and the other which the readers has to extract out so in this lines the specious monsters my accomplished snare does not sing anything about the wife or the beloved of a man but uh, by reading these uh, this line the specious monster my accomplished snare we not definitely think about the monster but before the deceitful cleverness of a woman but this the word woman has not been used in this line so this is what sort of ambiguity and which gives the other meaning than the text then there is a fourth type of uh, ambiguity which mean which the alternative meanings combine to make a clear complicated state of the mind and the authors means they might not be given in the text ambiguity of the fourth types occurs when two or more meaning of a statement do not agree among themselves but combine to make a clear a more complicated state of mind in the authors different readers apply their consciousness in different ways and a line which will uh, taken alone would be the third type uh, of ambiguity may become the fourth type in its meaning but the distinction here here is the sonnet of uh, shakespeare uh, which is about the beauty of uh, her beloved uh, so we see that and uh, that uh, means the right a reader is not having all the things in his mind at the same time but uh, uh, sorry writer is uh, is also not having the same things in his mind uh, similarly readers they interpret different things i never saw that thou did painting needs here painting means beautification uh, the poet says that I never have heard that you need any artificial beauty you are already more beautiful but the word he has used the painting over here uh, with the beautification and therefore to your fear no painting set so he says that 
as you are the best beauty in the world so any painting on your face would be has not been suitable for you i found or thought i found you did exceed the barren tender of the poet's debt so he says that even my imagination means my ten, uh, barren tender means my imagination is very poor to say something about your beauty and therefore i have i slept in your report means therefore as i was not having anything therefore i uh, submit myself my wit to your beauty that you yourself being extent well mighty will might show how for a modern quill does come to short here is the word quill so modern quill means poet is sleeping in the quill of uh, uh, his beloved so all these these things are uh, to sleep in the quill is uh, is going to be contributed is going to be associated with the beauty of the uh, woman so they are all all are strange and uh, interesting as well speaking of the worth what worth in you does grow this silence for my sin did you impute which shall i be most my glory being dumb for i impair not beauty being mute and uh, when others we would give you, give life and bring a tom there lives more life in one of your fair eyes then both your poets can in praise devise so how interestingly the beauty of the of the uh, beloved has been represented over here uh, by different objects for example you know painting is something different poets dabbed is something different quill is something different uh, being dumb is something uh, different bring a tomb is something life and death and dying that but all these things are going to describe the beauty of the fair eyes of the woman who might be a beloved or the wife so shakespeare this was the uh, sonnet by shakespeare and shakespeare is the writer upon whom the ingenuity has most often been misapplied and in this in his syntax appears the ambiguous uh, it 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 may be because elizabethan rules of punctuation trusted to the reader's intelligence means uh, writing in the age of shakespeare was not uh, even it was not easy uh, means the uh, poets have been pl- playing with the punctuation marks and we it was up to the wit of the readers that how they extract the meaning from those uh, text it was the fashion at that time to some extent the fifth type is the fortune confusions and arthur is discovering his idea in the act of writing not holding it all in the mind at once means uh even the, the those this those poets uh, have used some ideas which have not been uh prevailing at that time as well uh, for example uh in paradise lost and uh, the idea of phosphorus fire has been used means the uh, uh fire coming out of phosphorus so at that time the phosphorus as element has not been discovered yet so uh, there were some things which might be ambiguous at that time for example uh, uh th- there were uh, some things uh, uh, of image of flying in the 14th century th- that that w- might not been evident that uh, one day in the 19th or the 20th century there would be a time when man would be flying but the image of flight has been used in uh, paradise lost as well so speaking before one age are speaking before the things which have not been discovered at the time of speaking are ambiguous definitely for the reader at that time an ambiguity of the fifth type occurs when the author is discovering his idea in the act of writing or not holding it all his in, in his mind at at once so for instance there is a simile which applies to nothing exactly but lies halfway between two things when the author is moving from one to the other here shakespeare uh, says of natures to pursue like rats that raven down 
their proper vein a thirsty evil means when we drink we die evidently the first idea was that the lust itself was the poison but the word proper introduced uh, as a meaning suitable for rats <laughs> so at that time uh, uh, that poison have not been uh, suitable uh, to ki- to die to kill the rats it has not been the tested medicine at that time but also having an irrelevant suggestion of the right and natural and more exact memory of those nowadays fast for us which i have already talked poisonous which are designed to prevent rats from dying in the wings coat produced in the grander are less usual image in which the eating of the poison corresponds to the fall of man and is drinking water a healthful and natural human function which is intolerable to avoid and which brings the death as well so means drinking water was considered at that time the image of life but uh, drinking any liquid uh, which uh, may have water but something else might be the cause of death as well but these medicines and the poisons have not been tested uh, under men in the age of shakespeare the sixth type of uh, ambiguity is when it is said uh, is contradictory or irrelevant to the readers and they are forced to invent the things by their own interpretation ambiguity of the sixth type occurs when a statement says nothing for example here uh, we would be uh, looking at the uh, the, 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 the a statement from the authorized version of the hebrew uh, th- these are the contradictions uh, th- this line is thou hath not deliver thy people at all so thou hath delivered and nothing at all means uh, apparently it is giving that thou hast delivered it was supposed to be delivered that thou hast delivered everything to the people but uh, contradiction of it is that thou hath not delivered uh not is going to deconstruct the word delivered so the device in this sense means real and active uh, uh you know god is supposed to be deliv- uh, deliverer so when the someone is going that thou hath not delivered thy people at all th- that's the juxtaposition and contradiction so it, it makes uh, uh, the statement as ambiguous uh unconventional as well uh, but uh, it creates a meaning as well so seven type of uh, ambiguity is the contradictions when the um, they are marked in the author's mind it is the most ambiguous that can be conceived occurs when two meanings of the word the two values of the ambiguity are the two opposite meanings defined by the context so they are the total effect to show a fundamental division in the writing for example uh, i have used it uh, example of this for example if you want to show uh, the opposites of something you may use the scale here we are talking about the scale uh, which might be an extended between the two points though no not no two points are in themselves opposite but that in searching for the greater accuracy one might say 2% white and means a very black shade of gray means 2% white so <laughs> how it is ambiguous that 2% of white it, it can have been said simply means the uh, dark black shade of gray but when you say the 2% white that becomes ambiguous mm, and one might admit that the criterion in the last type becomes psycho- psychological rather than the logical in that the crucial point of the definition has become the idea of the of a context and the total attitude to that context is the individuals means it vary from person to person so these seven uh, types of ambiguities have been discussed by samson and uh, he is of the view that uh, in order to extract the meanings uh, in order to create the space for more meanings the writers are uh, the poets uh, uh, prose writers poetry uh, poets and the dramatists they use different types of ambiguities to make it more literary and dramatic in the situation as well uh,
uh, it was all about the seven types of ambiguity and uh, take care goodbye thank you